interrupting. Okay, good morning to all of you. I am happy to uh, discuss about uh, soil and aggregates uh, regarding the pavement today. And uh, I will be happy to take your questions also. If you have any doubt, any question you can discuss after the lecture. I will be happy for that. So there are uh, mainly five types of uh, There are mainly five types of soils in the country, lateritic soils. These are uh, uh, coming where the, the laterite so, uh, stones are there. So after uh, weathering, these just become lateritic soil. Then we have morum or red soils. We have uh, these, these are available mainly in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, some part of Madhya Pradesh, and some part of Maharashtra also. Then we have desert sands. Or desert soils, these are available in uh, Rajasthan and some part of Gujarat. Then we have alluvial soils. Alluvial soils are basically the soils which are coming along with the rivers. So these are mainly in Gangetic Plains. You will have uh, these alluvial soils. Then we have clays, including black cotton soils. Uh, these are also available in different parts of the country, especially in. Uh, Andhra Pradesh, in Maharashtra, in West Bengal also you will find these soils. The black cotton soils are the soils which are having maximum PI. PI means uh, plasticity index. So these soils are the most problematic soils for road construction. Wherever you have the black cotton soils, either you have to remove the soil and put a new layer or you have to do the stabilization. Uh, stabilization also we will discuss a little later. Uh, what is stabilization and how can we do that? That we will see. Then uh, these are the low grade soft aggregates uh, available uh, in the country. These are gravels and morums. Concord, Concord is mainly available in Uttar Pradesh. The Andhla is available in Rajasthan. Late right are available in the vicinity of uh, rocks. Then we have soft stone or sandstone. These are having very limited. Uh, compressive strength. Then we have brick aggregates or the beds and overturned burnt bricks. When we are making the bricks, uh, sometimes they are broken. So broken bricks are normally not used in the building construction. Those known, those bricks, broken bricks are known as bats. And these bats can be utilized in the road construction. Similarly, overburned bricks loses the uh, the strength. They are not the first class bricks, so these can also be used in the road construction. Now we have some non-conventional waste materials which are available uh, in the country and we can uh, use them uh, in road construction. Starting with the uh, blast furnace leg. Uh, blast furnace leg is these, these three are coming from the steel industry. These are coming from the steel industry. Blast furnace leg uh, is coming out from uh, uh, the, the blast furnace and the, there may be different type of uh, slag that I will be discussing a little later. Uh, how uh, these are coming, what is the difference between blast furnace leg and granulated blast furnace leg, GBFS. Then the steel slag is coming out from steel making shop. Then we have fly ash. Fly ash is also available in, in, a, in a very huge quantity. And it is a major problematic material in the country because the name is fly ash. So it, it flies in the air when it is put in the air without water. Similarly, when it is put in the, in the it is collected, uh, it is uh, collected by the precipitators of the, the, the uh, furnaces, then it is known as fly ash. And there is some heavy type of um, these particles also which are collected at the bottom of the, the furnaces. So these are known as the bottom ash. Both of these are collected in um, wet ponds having water. So at that time it is known as where both type of materials can be there. Then it is known as pond ash. Then we have copper slag. Uh, copper slag is uh, the waste material when you are making the copper. Uh, from the ore, 
just like the iron uh, uh, ores are there, hematite, uh, feldspar, etc. are there. Similarly, uh, you have copper ores also. Then the, from the copper ore, when you convert it into copper, then copper slag comes out. Then we have inorganic municipal waste. Inorganic uh, municipal waste is uh, the material which is collected uh, through the, the municipalities. And from there, you can uh, take out the material which is non biodegradable. Those materials which biodegrade, there, these are difficult to be used in the construction, but we can use the non biodegradable materials in inorganic municipal waste as a road construction. One road was made in Delhi in uh, as is known as the Gadi Dandala Road. This was uh, constructed in Delhi, in, uh, in the western part of Delhi. Then we have query waste. When we blast the queries uh, using the dynamite for some purpose to take the material, the, the, the material is uh, spreaded near the, the, the queries and later it can be collected and used in road construction. Similarly, we have silica fume. Silica fume is the material which is coming out from the glass industry. When you are making the, the glass, maybe uh, uh, any type of glass, you have a waste material which is known as silica fume. Then we have uh, coilery spoil. Coilery spoil is the material which is used uh, in, uh, uh, which is available when you are blasting the, the coal queries. From there, this coilery spoil comes and it can also be used. Red mud is a material. Anybody can guess? From you, what is red mud? Among the uh, students, anybody can tell me what is red mud? Unmute your mic and then tell. Yeah, you you guys can uh, raise your hand and then I can unmute whoever wants to speak. Anyone has any idea about the red mud? Okay, Amruta Joshi is saying, uh, sir, in the chat box, she is saying uh, Meta Kowlin. Mm, no, it is not coming from there. Uh, red mud is coming from aluminium industry. When you are making, uh, uh, when you are making the, the aluminium, then it comes from there. Uh, and uh, I have not opened the chat box actually it will take the space here so I am not opening that but anyway uh, you can speak if you want yes somebody is saying bauxite bauxite is okay bauxite is the aluminium ore so when you are converting bauxite to aluminium then this red mud comes similarly baguette what is baguette anybody can tell what is baguette Yes, please raise your hand and I will un unmute it. Uh, yes, Sumit Nandi is saying sugarcane. Okay, yes. it is right. From the sugarcane industry, this is coming. Uh, Anil Kumar also saying sugarcane. Amrinder Kumar is saying sugarcane. So it is good. You are knowing when you when you uh, take out the, the juice from the sugarcane, then the remaining part without juice is burned. It is burned to take the the energy from that. It is used in the in the sugarcane industry. After extracting the juice from sugarcane, uh, the remaining part is burned, and from the burning part, you have uh, this bagas, which is a, a, just like fly ash. It is also there. Its color is also grayish to blackish, uh, and it can be used in road construction. Then we have construction debris. Construction debris is the material which is found near the buildings. Wherever you see, there, there are some waste materials uh, after the construction, maybe in form of bats, maybe in, in the form of uh, the when you are demol demolishing the buildings at that time, also the material is coming out. All these materials can be used in the construction industry of uh, roads or the pavement. Then we have scrap pads. Scrap tie-ups are basically, uh, these are used in crumb rubber. These are used as crumb rubber. 
it is uh, it is obtained after sh shedding of tire because after the use as the tire of vehicles these are waste if you remember the old uh, tv uh, sh news uh, bulletins uh, people for doing any agitation people were doing the the burning the tires on the road uh, to stop the traffic but nowadays it is not going on because tires are also being used as a crumb rubber and this crumb rubber is uh, mixed uh, with the uh, bitumen so that it reduces the susceptibility of the, the bitumen i am not going in detail of the bitumen because i have been given the part of uh, soil and aggregates only but you can understand that in case of bitumen uh, we want the susceptibility it should behave in different manner at different temperatures like we want a material uh, which should be liquid when we are mixing it with the aggregate it should be semi solid when you are compacting it it should be solid when you are using as a road and this is the quality of the bitumen that at different different temperatures it behaves differently but when this quality becomes excessive it becomes more susceptible to bitumen then the problem comes like at uh, high temperatures it starts bleeding and at very low temperatures it starts uh, cracking so for that purpose to reduce this susceptibility we add some modifiers and crumb rubber is one of them right so it is used for that purpose also then we have the coir coir is a, is a material which is coming out from coconut and it can also be used for the reinforcement of the soil then we have jute which is coming out from this is coming from coconut while this is coming from from black cotton soil from black cotton soil we get the jute and india is the the largest producer of jute in the, in the world jute and coir both for both india is the largest producer of these materials i don't know the position may go one or first or second it may be changing but uh, it is one of the largest producer in the world then we have paper industry waste uh, paper industry waste is a, is a, a material which is coming out when you are making the papers you are uh, converting the, the the plants into the paper there also it is coming and it is known as black liquid Black liquid is coming out. It can be used to strengthen the soil. Then we have rice husk ash. You know that it is coming out from paddy. Uh, from paddy, uh, that means when in the original form, the rice is known as paddy. It, it is having a covering. You see, this is rice, and over the rice you have a covering. This covering is removed, and again, it is just like sugar cane. It is also burned. And it gives you ash, which is also similar to bagasse or fly ash. Similarly, the rice straw ash. Rice straw ash is the, is coming out not from the covering of the rice, but along with the rice, it, you are having the straw. So straw means that material which on which uh, the rice are coming, or you can say stem of the rice. So that stem is known as rice straw, and it is also burned, and that gives you rice straw ash. Then this wollastonite, this is a material available in Rajasthan. It is a uh, inorganic material and it is, you can say, very soft type of uh, rock. It is also uh, used, uh, some students have done uh, PhD at IIT Roorkee also. Uh, they, they have done it, uh, I think Dr. Shashikan uh, did this work on wollastonite. And before that, uh, Dr. Ran Singh Chung this, did this work at IIT BHU. So uh, that is also available. Now we have waste plastic, waste bag plastic. Waste bag plastic means the, the, the plastic bags which we are throwing on the road. These are collected by the, the, uh, the plastic pickers and they give it to the industry and that industry makes it the recycling. But we can use it in the road construction also to make it uh, waterproof to, to stop the, 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 the flow of water. Then we have asbestos, asbestos uh, uh, sheets are there, which are used in uh, in the construction industry to for the the temporary sheets.
for temporary sheds these are being used and then we have bislery and other plastic bottles also this is known as pet 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 these are also used in the construction of road and uh, uh, we can uh, modify the bitumen using this pet material of course the problem with pet is its melting point is very high so sometimes if you are heating the bitumen up to that point then uh, the bitumen loses its binding property and if you don't heat it then it is it is not melted uh, the pet is not melted so there are ways we have done some studies in our uh, institute iit rurki for that purpose and uh, but that is not in the purview of today's lecture so i am not discussing that part now come back to the waste materials i i have said i will be discussing about the uh, waste materials now you see this hill somebody may see that this is a hill from rajasthan or some hill station like that but it is not like that basically this is a dump this is a dump at vishakhapatnam and this is coming out from the steel industry and this these materials are uh, having a lot of land covering a lot of land and it is a wastage of land so that is why uh, we tried to use this material in the road construction again you can see uh, this was the another project i did it was for uh, raurkela steel plant and this is again a dump you can understand the height of this dump by seeing this buffalo the height of buffalo is this one only so from that you can make the estimate that what is the height of the dump and how difficult it is to remove this now you can see the materials which are coming there this is blast furnace slab this is granulated blast furnace like granulated blast furnace like gbf and this is ply ash the first material can be utilized as a coarse aggregate or the stone second material can be utilized as a coarse sand and third material can be utilized as a coarse fine sand so these three are available in the market now uh, these are coming out from the industries first two are coming from the steel industry Uh, steel plants while the third one is coming out from the thermal plants where you are using the coal to generate the electricity now what about blast furnace slag what it is it is a by product generated during production of iron and it is chiefly composed of calcium and magnesium silicates and aluminum silicates and it depends upon the cooling process uh, if you are uh, when you you bring the the this material from the plant it is very uh, highly heated the temperature of the blast furnace leg may be around 1100 degree centigrade so when this material is coming out it is a it is a red liquid like uh, when i visited once in uh, vishakhapatnam steel plant uh, jokingly uh, somebody said that when i asked what is this uh, what is this red liquid he said this is a liquid and if you put a drop of this liquid on your palm it will not burn your palm if i put a drop of this red liquid on your palm and palm it will not burn your palm it will come out from the other side of the palm why because the temperature is so high so it is to be cooled and when it is cooled there may be three ways one way is by putting by putting in air then it is known as air cooled second is by water jet and third is by air jet but when it is in air natural cooling putting it in the air and natural cooling then it is known as blast furnace slag it takes the shape of boulders and that boulders are broken just like normal aggregates we have and uh, uh, if it is cooled by uh, the the uh, uh, by the uh, air Uh, this water jet then it uh, forms the the tiny particles and uh, uh, then it takes the shape, shape of uh, coarse sand and it is known as granulated blast furnace slag then we have if we are putting it the air jet 
then it is known as expanded slab. Expanded slags are very lightweight materials which can be used in filling where you want the volume but you, you don't want the weight. So at that place you can use this material. Now steel slag, it is the, uh, because if you see uh, the process, uh, it is the, the blast furnace slag, blast furnace, it is blast furnace. It, here you use hematite plus calcium, calcium carbonate. So this gives you big iron and blast furnace slag. This is put in steel making shop. This gives you steel and SMS, steel making slag. This steel making slag is having more amount of steel because it is coming at a refined stage. Further, you add different percentages of carbon, chromium, strontium, etc. to make different type of steel, maybe high carbon steel, maybe stainless steel or soft steel. Depending upon the percentage of carbon, you can decide. But we are interested in these two, two materials, blast furnace slag and steel making shop slag. So uh, this is a very hard material. This SMS is a very hard material. It is having lower alumina and silica, but high lime content. These are the uh, percentages of uh, different uh, constituents in blast furnace slag and steel making shop. Uh, then uh, you can see here the percentages. These are okay for us. There is no issue because these are the requirements of these materials like for imp aggregate impact value, gratification value, loss and yield separation value, plackiness, elongation, water absorption, and bulk density. These materials are uh, available. If you see the aggregate impact value, it should be maximum for subbase course, it should be maximum 40. We are having 80 to 24 the blast furnace leg, 8 to 11 as the steel making shop. Similarly, for aggregate crushing value, it is not given here. For Los Angeles abrasion uh, value, it should be maximum 50 for rural loads, and it is coming 28 to 32 for BFS and 9 to 10 for SMS. It is also showing that uh, SMS is tougher than the BFS. It is having more uh, uh, hardness and the, the toughness in comparison to blast furnace like so This is a very good material. Its uh, bulk density is also more. You can see here. 2100 is the bulk density of SMS, while 800 is the bulk density of blast furnace slag. So this is very clearly uh, visible that the steel making shop is hard, dense, and more durable. These are the, the chemical compositions of these three materials, blast furnace slag, steel slag, and fly ash use. And mainly you will find that blast furnace is having more silica in comparison to SM slag. And fly ash is having maximum silica but uh, the calcium oxide is more in case of sm slag so this calcium oxide uh, is basically uh, the strength or the line of sm slag uh, this is also the strength this is also the problem also because there is some amount of free lime in in sm slag and uh, uh, this is the problem 1 to 2.5 percent uh, calcium is there in uh, SM slag in the form of free lime, and when it is uh, fresh, so the it uh, reacts with the atmospheric moisture, and because of that, there is expansion in the pavement, and the pavement got the cracks and it fills. So it was discussed at that time when I was doing this uh, project. And uh, we found that uh, the solution for this is that let it be weathered for one year. Put the material in the air uh, on the land for one year. 
in that time the free lime will react with the atmospheric moisture or the rain water and then it will become inert with after that it will be the 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 excellent material you can see the uh, specification for a road i made one road uh, in andhra pradesh the first road which was known as ankapalli kudimadaka road it was having uh, the sections of 50 meter each in which uh, four sections i developed and with different options were there like gravel gpfs wbm uh, wbm oversize gravel soil and soil in different layers the different materials were used it is the the road you can see here this is ankapalli kudimadaka road which where we have in the site 1.25 meter widening was done using these materials as i have said the specifications and then it was tested this is tested this is another road known as bimuni patnam narsi patnam road bn road both the roads are near vishakhapatnam steel plant both are near the vishakhapatnam steel plant and we observed the uh, of course it is a very old photograph uh, of mine when i did around 20 years back i did this project and since then it is in the materials are in use throughout the country and uh, this is as i said the road which is having both the sides as the winding and these materials are there and we use for the the roughness of the road we use dumpy level this is dumpy level right the dumpy level was used for this purpose and uh, uh, you can see here uh, of course nowadays many new devices are available which uh, in the second project also i use other devices but nowadays many devices are available in the country which can be used this is the uh, third project uh, or the, the second project which was the bokaro steel plant this is the bokaro steel plant and i used the material in different layers of this also then this is the third project i did for this it was uh, near the raukela steel plant and uh, the road we used was bandamunda jaraikala road in raukela in that we developed 11 sections in 1 km of the road number 6 was the conventional construction in which you will find the it is top with the water mount macadam and the lower part is the the gravelly soil and the top, top one is the bituminous layer uh, in this project that is the third project we use the grave french technique grave latier technique in which in all the layers waste material was used even in the the top layer of the bitumen also it was used and uh, you can see here uh, in 11 sections we tried different specifications of blast furnace like of steel making shop etc then we uh, did the evaluation you can see here this is the evaluation using the bankelman beam this is bankelman beam and this is dipstick so for the uh, the structural evaluation or the structural adequacy uh, we we use bankelman beam for functional adequacy we use the dipstick you can see here and in in this we find the, the roughness this is a mini computer fitted with this it is having two you know, legs and this is moved like this this part will go like this then it will give the difference of the next two points then it will go like this it will give the difference of next two points that way the rut depth or unevenness can be measured you can see here 
that uh, this many computer has come here and the reading is being taken this is showing you the texture of the the road when we use the steel making shop in that on the top right uh, and uh, this is uh, basically the toughest or the hardest surface among the 11 sections because it was having a steel making shop and even with the compaction by the road roller the uh, the, the particles were protruding out and we were not able to 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 compress them this is again showing one uh, dump of the waste material then we have the flyage utilization in road embankments uh, in the flyage utilization uh, we we made one uh, approach road of second nizamuddin bridge in De delhi the parallel bridge which was made was known as at that time in the japan friendship bridge because uh, it was made uh, by the japanese company nippon and the japanese government funded that road that bridge and the approach road of that bridge was made by uh, using fly ash and for that we utilized 10000 trucks of fly ash but the fly ash has certain problem as i have said that uh, uh, it is uh, a material which flies in air if it is put there without water and water if it is added then the problem is its uh, optimum moisture content is very high normal moisture content for the soils may vary from 6 to 14 but in this case it, it is more than 25 percent so what happened at the time of construction we we, we use the layered approach layered approach means uh, you have to provide one layer of fly edge and one layer of soil and one layer of fly edge and one layer of soil like that. Uh, then uh, 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 you can see here that uh, why we did this because uh, there were many uh, researches in which the, the materials were mixed with fly edge. Like somebody mixed lime, somebody mixed soil, uh, cement, somebody mixed uh, polypropylene fiber, somebody mixed uh, with uh, that research also I will show you later. But uh, problem is you cannot mix the fly edge with different materials. So that is why uh, if it is in dry condition, then it can be mixed, but the, at that time it flies. In the wet condition, it cannot be mixed. So uh, somebody uh, commented uh, rightly at that time in a joking mood that all the papers which have been published on fly edge research, if you arrange them systematically one after the other then length of those papers will be more than the actual load of construction using fly ash at that time so it, it people were making jokes on fly ash at that time that uh, people are making the research in the lab but in field it is not implemented so we did this thing in a different way we did not mix fly ash with anything we said we will put one meter of uh, fly ash layer then 30 centimeter of soil, then one meter of fly edge like that. And in that also, if you see here, that uh, the problem came because after putting one, one meter of fly edge, there was a rainfall. And because of the rainfall, the moisture content increased. And when we put the, the soil here, the moisture also went to the soil layer and it was more than the, the optimum moisture content. So when the, the, the roller was put there the soil was boggling so for that purpose uh, it was again removed this layer was removed from here the the flyage layer was shown to the uh, shown to the sunlight and after that when it became the omc then we put another layer so it was a difficult process but it was the research was on stake at that time everybody was seeing everybody was monitoring because the ministry of environment and uh, was putting a lot of pressure on us that it should be successful so that fly edge can be utilized otherwise it was difficult so it was successful and you can see here uh, you can see here this is the compaction process going on uh, you can see the, the three photographs this is having the soil this is having fly ash 
and this is having the stone pitching on the side. Somebody is asking in the chat box that uh, the compression was not difficult. Yes, it was very difficult as I said. If it is having more moisture content, then it will be difficult. But as I said that you have to, to control a host, a, a ghost. Then you, you will do everything, whatever you have. So we did that and uh, it was a successful story. And after that, now fly ash is not a waste material. It is not a waste material now. Uh, it is a useful resource material. And uh, if you know in Delhi, there was a lot of problem at that time from Ghaziabad. Uh, the, in, in Delhi, uh, to, to make the, the embankments, it was banned to lift the soil from anywhere. If you want to bring it from Ghaziabad, in Ghaziabad, it was not banned to, to lift it, but it was banned to, to transport to Delhi. From UP to Delhi, it was not allowed. So there was a lot of problem in making the flyovers because in making the flyovers, you require the embankments. So this gave a very beautiful solution. And at the same time, the utilization of fly edge was there. Otherwise, what you see today in Delhi, like in the pollution problem is there, the air is surcharged with the, the SPM and other particles during the, the, the special seasons when uh, this uh, farmers are put, burning the parali. But at the same time, you can imagine if had it been there that the fly edge was also contributing to that, it might have been impossible to live in Delhi. But it was done. Otherwise, it was impossible to live in Delhi. Nobody could have lived there because of the burning of Parali and the fly edge problem. Now again, I can see uh, this photograph where you, you see here that uh, this is the way in which we are using the, these boxes. These boxes are the waste plastics which we, we used in the study. It is the complex of BPL in Mumbai. And I did this project along with the BPL. Uh, that is the, the uh, industry making the, the vitamin. And in that we use these uh, boards of plastic. These are the boards of plastic which is a base plastic and they are compressed at a, at a high pressure. And because of that, uh, these are becoming in the form of boards. These boards are cut and these boxes are made. In these boxes, we fill the, the vitamins concrete and these are used. Next year, I went there to, to see the, uh, the strength of the road for the structural adequacy. Uh, I said I'm using the Benkelman beam. This is another type of Benkelman beam in which we have the, the direct readings instead of uh, uh, doing the manual work. It is giving the direct uh, automatic readings. And this was also a successful project. After that, BPCL uh, did this project in Noida also. Now they are planning to do it in all the four metropolitan cities of the country. Now we come to the stabilization part. Stabilization means, as I've said in the beginning, that if the soil is not proper or the materials are not proper, you can uh, have two options. One is remove the material and put a good material there. In that case, a lot of transportation is required to remove that material and where that metal is to be put there after the removal. This is again a question. Whether it is a soil or is it an aggregate in both the cases, if the material, if the aggregates or the soft is not, if the soil is not good, then you have to either remove from there or you have to do the sterilization. Sterilization may be of two types. One is the mechanical. Another is the chemical. In the mechanical stabilization, what you do is you mix the material with another material which is having the required strength and the property. Without doing any chemical reaction, there is no chemical reaction among the material. And if you are not getting sufficient strength after that, then another way is to do the chemical stabilization. In chemical stabilization, what we do is we, uh, we uh, do this with the, a material which has the chemical reaction with the soil or the material. And because of that chemical reaction, the strength and other properties are improved. So first we will see the mechanical stabilization and then we will see the chemical stabilization. In the chem mechanical stabilization, again, you have to do the mechanical st stabilization to achieve two things. 
one is the grading another is the pi i am again repeating there is no chemical reaction this is just the mixing and compacting so for pi you can see this method which was prepared by cri that uh, if you have two pi pa material a is having pi pa material b is having pi pb and you want to get the pi equivalent to p then you have to mix them in a ratio a to b is equal to p minus pb is to p minus p we can take one uh, example for this <clears throat> for example suppose this is uh, 16 and this is 2 16 means highly clay soil and 2 is a sandy soil so if you want to get it in the form and you want to take the pi of say 6 you want the pi of the resultant mix to be 6 you have two material one is having pi 16 another is having pi 2 then in the ratio they are to be mixed p minus pb that is 6 minus 2 and here you have uh, 16 minus 6 this means 4 is to 10 that is 2 is to 5 you have to mix them in the ratio of 2 is to 5 and the resultant will be having the pi equal to 6 clear if you have any doubt you can ask Okay. Now, instead of doing uh, uh, this exercise, you have some lump sum percent requirement also. Clay soil needed for sands. You understand that if, if you have a sand, you have to add clay. And if you have a clay, you have to add sand. So that you have the PI in between the two. Right? Both are problematic. If you are having pure sand, then their PI is zero, which is also not required for the road construction. Normally, we should have four to six PI. And if you are having clays, clays means having highly PI soil that is also not required for the, the pavement because if the PI is very high, then there will be swelling after the, the addition of water or during a rainy season and during due to the swelling, there will be cracks in the pavement. So clay soil needed for sands. That means if you are having sand, then add clay soil 10 to 35 percent. If you are having silty soil, add sand 15 to 30 percent. If you are having clay and PC soil, then add sand 40 to 60 percent. Then uh, you can have a method to for the mixing of soil to get the required gradation also. Uh, this is a met method, here the method for mixing of soils to get required gradation. In this, conduct sieve analysis on materials A and B using a standard set of sieves. As I said, when you are mixing, Suppose you are having two, two soils, A and B. And you have to mix them in such a manner that the, the resulting soil or resulting mix is, is having a, a gradation which is required by the method. So calculate arithmetic mean of the recommended gradation limits. Determine the numerical difference between mean as per step two and the actual percent passing the respective seeds and mix A and B in the inverse proportion. You can take one example, then it will be clear. You have a material A. And this is the seed size. This is, these are the recommended limits. Seed size is this. That means the material in final form should have 100% passing from 40 mm, 80 to 100% passing from 20 mm, 55 to 80% passing from 10 mm, like that. You have two material A and B. This is A and this is B. You see here, A is not conforming to the recommendation. For example, the requirement for 10 mm passing is 55 to 80, but it is having 94. So this is not satisfying. Similarly, the recommended limit for 4.75 is 40 to 60%. It is having 83% passing. So this is not satisfying. Similarly, this is also not satisfying. Like material B is having 73% passing from, from 20 mm size. While requirement is 80 to 100%. So that way these are to be mixed. And the first step is find out the arithmetic mean of the recommended limits. 
100 is 100 and the arithmetic mean of 80 to 100 is 90 50 to 55 to 80 is 68 40 to 60 arithmetic mean is 50 30 to 50 arithmetic mean is 40 15 to 30 is 22 and 5 to 15 is 10. Next step is find the difference between this and this. So uh, difference of 100 and this 100 is 0. 90 uh, and this, uh, this is the, the percent passing. This is the arithmetic mean. This is say uh, 98 and 90. The difference between 90 and 98 is 8. Difference between 68 and 94 is 26. Like that, you have the numerical differences. Similarly, you have the numerical differences of material B also. Add these materials that will give you 139 here, 45 here. Their ratio will be in the reverse, that is, A is to B is 45 is to 139, that is, 1 is to 3.5. Right. So this is the method to, but the drawback of this method is in this method, you can use only two type of uh, material, A and B. Then we have another method. It is known as the Rothschild method. Rothschild method is a method in which you can use any number of aggregates or the type of soils and mix them. And uh, uh, this is a method which you remember what you did in your 10th and 12th classes. Uh, you do some manipulations. If you remember in your 10th class what you were doing. Suppose there was a uh, ex experiment in your 12th class. There was a experiment in which you were asked to draw a curve between V and I. And it was supposed to be a straight line between voltage and current in ampere. So what you did at that time? You remember? Anybody can tell what he did or she did? You are shying in telling, but actually is that what you did, you first draw the curve and then very smartly you put some points here and then you showed to your teacher and said sir i am getting a straight line but actually you were not getting right so uh, and your teacher also gave you full marks for that and you 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 thought that you have made him fool but actually he was not made fool he was also knowing all these things as he has also done the same thing when he was in class 11th or 12th, right? So, uh, same work was done by Rothkoch. He did the, the method a little way ahead than what you did in your class 11th and 12th. What he did, you manipulated the curve only, he manipulated, he manipulated these axes also. How he did, you can see now. Do the sieve analysis of materials and mix in ABC. Mark percentages 0 to 100 percent on the vertical scale. Draw a diagonal joining 0 to 100 percent passing. Using percent passing of y axis required gradation and diagonal draw sieve size on x axis. What is being done? You can see here. First, he said draw particle size distribution of materials A, B, and C. Convert the distribution of curve into... Okay. Do the sieve size analysis of materials A, B, and C. Mark passing 0 to 100 percent means he said 0, 100, 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, and so on. Draw a diagonal. Draw a diagonal here. Draw a diagonal here. And this diagonal has been is the curve which is required. Okay. 
as you have drawn this curve here he draw this curve and even though he has not put the, the points here in the curve even he has not put the x axis values also now he said corresponding to the percent passing required and the the, the sieve size now you plot here so suppose he says that the 100 percent passing should be there from 40 mm so this will be 40 mm then he said uh, from 60 percent passing should be there from 20 mm so corresponding to this you come here this is 20 mm and so on and accordingly all the point all the the sheet sizes are drawn here then next point is draw the distribution of curve a b c these are a b and c then join the point last point of a with the start point of b last point of b with the start point of c wherever this points are cutting the line of diagonal these are basically your percentages of a b and c you can see in the figure this diagonal you have drawn these are the sheet sizes you have drawn from this and then draw the <clears throat> curve make a straight line of the curve this is the straight line of a this is the straight line of b this is the straight line of c then join the this point with last point of a join the last first point of c with last point of b and wherever it is cutting it is cutting here it is cutting here so this is basically a this is b and this is c right this is the method of rothwich then in a triangular chart method again you can see here that uh, you have to use a triangle this is used in a different way you have made a triangle in which on one side of the triangle you have force aggregate on one side you have sand and on the other side you have clay right and it is saying 0 to 100 then 0 to 100 here and then 0 to 100 here it is in a clockwise manner anti-clockwise manner you are having this three materials and each material is suppose you have a a is having say in this case this is a point a it is having say 85 percent of uh, force aggregate 5 percent of clay and 10 percent of sand This is a key. This is showing this percentage is showing your force aggregate. This percentage is showing clay. And this is showing you sand. So that way A point is marked. Similarly, mark point B, similarly, mark point C. And then that the desired condition is marked as D. This is D. Join the point C with D extend it to join the line a b at point e so you will get the point e here right you have got the point e here and uh, in this way uh, you have now a b c d and e you have to measure all these values and then you have the formula for finding out the percentages of a b and c to get the desired gradation D. Percent of A is EB DC into 100 upon ABEC. Percent of B is EA DC into 100 upon ABEC. Percent of C is ED upon EC. Of course, uh, it is, uh, I don't know whether you are 100% understanding or not, but this is a part which I discuss in my classes also. Uh, there I, I take for the one and a half hours which I am taking for you, 
I may take uh, four or five hours in the class for that, and then it is more clear. But definitely uh, in the lectures like this, we have to cover a little more part in a lesser time. That is why I, I, I'm not uh, sure whether you, it is 100% clear to you or not. But if you have any doubt, you can ask. <clears throat> if you have any doubt, please ask. Or in the last 15 minutes, you can ask the questions. Uh, yes, sir, that would be better. In the At the end, we can have a question answer session. Okay, okay. So, uh, what I can do is, uh, after about uh, 10, uh, 15 minutes, I will stop and then I can uh, take the questions. Uh, that would be great, sir. Okay. Then, uh, from where the desired gradation comes, like in this case, I was telling you, this D is the desired gradation. Or in uh, previous problem, I said, that uh, this is the desired condition or the like, recommended limits. From where this comes, how you decide in a mix that it should be the size from the C uh, which should be passing. For that purpose, this Fuller's method is there. Uh, Fuller's method is there for desired condition. It is given by percent finer than D is given by 100 times D upon D to the power N, where D is the finer dia, finer than dia D, and D is the diameter of largest particle size, and N is the gradation index which may be taken 0.5 for a spherical shape. I will take one example. Suppose there is a mix in which maximum size of the aggregate is 40 mm. So D is 40 mm. Now I want to know what should be the percent passing through 20 mm. You got the point? I am saying the, the maximum size is 40 mm and I want to pass the material. I want to know what should be the percent passing from a small d. That is 20 mm. So I will put it here. Percent passing is uh, 20 divided by 40 to the power 0.5. So this is uh, 1 by 2 to the power 0.5. This comes out to be 0 0.707, that is 70.7%. If I take D is equal to 40 and small d is equal to 10 mm, what is the passing from 10 mm? Anybody can tell what is the passing from small 10 mm? You can write in the chat box. What is the passing from 10 mm in a mix of the, the size 40 mm maximum size? Anybody, anybody can make the calculation and tell me. If you, if you guys want to speak also, sir, uh, Vipendri is saying 50%. Yes, Vinesh Durai is saying 50%. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Vinesh Durai is saying it is 50%. Anybody else has tried? I hope more than 100 students are there. So they can try. Vipendra Singh is also saying, Vipendra Singh Jankaman is saying 50%. Raj Bardhan Singh is also saying 50%. Vivek Bogde is saying 70%. Vivek Bogre, how you are got 50, 70%? 70% was for this 20 mm. I am asking for 10 mm. Pranab Saraswat saying 50%. So, except one student, all are saying 50%. So, 50% answer is correct. 70% is not correct. That was for 20 mm. So, now for this, uh, it is like this 10 by 40 to the power 0.5. So this is 1 by 4 to the power 0. 0.5, that is 0. 0.5. This comes out to be 0. 0.5. That is 50%. So clear? I hope this is clear. Now, stabilization using soft aggregates. How we do? Uh, Vivek Bogde is saying now yes. So he has agreed. It's okay. Uh, stabilization using soft aggregates, uh, you can see here. Uh, how to use the soft aggregates in the road construction. There may be three 
typical states of soil aggregates this is the case when there are only compacted aggregates with no points another case may be compacted aggregates with compacted points just filling the voids and the third case is the aggregate with excess points when the those aggregates are floating in the fine aggregates so if the aggregates are soft so what will happen if a load is applied here this will be broken while in this case since it is floating in the soil so this will not be the load which is applied here this load will be applied to the periphery of the aggregate and it will not break but there may be some major problem within this case also because you have to take care of that also with no points just filling the voids and excessive points in the first case it is highly permeable less permeable poorly permeable in this case there is no cohesion cohesion more cohesion stable when confined stable even when unconfined stable even when unconfined then no frost section cross section likely in this case cross section likely so this is the major problem in this case if you are using this so you can use this when there is no supply of water then you can go for third case so third case is suitable when the aggregates are soft if the aggregates are not soft you can go for second case which is the ideal one fine just filling the void but if the aggregates are soft then you should go for third but take care that there is no supply of water in the area so it should be normally having the high embankment so that water is not entering from the the water table of the area for this you have mishra's uh, mehra's method of construction using soft aggregates first put a base coat layer soil of 75 microns to 45 micron size and pi 5 to 7 then put wearing coat brick plus soil ratio in the ratio of 1 is to 2 it is more than 33% and pi 8 to 10 then soil is collected from approved boropets and stacked on road side water is added up to omc and soil is mixed and spread to desired camper again uh, we have to put the base coat thick loose base coat material so the soil is spread and over that you have to put the surface coat material which is a brick aggregate Plus soil in the ratio with adequate water is spread. I am discussing uh, the non-bituminous layer only. Otherwise, you can provide previous carpet layer. You can provide surface dressing also. So that may be covered by the teachers who are taking your bituminous uh, part. But I am taking only the the part where you are not using the bitumen. So you are using brick aggregate and soil in the ratio one is to two. So this is basically for rural roads. After rolling. the surface is watered and left overnight the surface is again rolled and finished road is close to traffic for 4 uh, to 5 days and is sprinkled with water for next few days only rubber tire traffic allowed and after about 2 a week the road is open to all traffic it can carry 50 ton per day of mixed traffic in low rainfall areas if you provide a bituminous surface treatment also then it can carry 200 tons then we come to the chemical stabilization in the chemical stabilization as i said there may be different type of stabilization you can go for lime you can go for flyish you can go for lime plus flyish you can go for cement you can go for bitumen you can go for special methods these may be the chemical stabilization as i said that the chemical stabilization means you are mixing some chemicals with the material with the soil or with the aggregate so with this uh, we will start with the lime stabilization it is adopted for silty clays in clay soils with pi more than 10 and lime should have calcium hydroxide more than 70% if it is not then you have to increase the quantity also the lime stabilization you can say that the alluvial soils and borum require 10 to 15 uh, pi should have lime content 2 to 3% for clays and bc soil 
it should be 3 to 5 percent. For highly expensive soil, it may be 5 to 6 percent. This is a method to find out this line fixation point. If you want to know the exact one, then make the, the point. As you see, the strength is increasing up to a certain point, then it starts decreasing with the increase in the line content. But the plasticity index, index is coming out, coming down. What is that? This is the difference between liquid limit and plastic limit is the plasticity index. So it is coming down. So we have to find out if a point because you want some plasticity also. If you go up to this point, the PI will become zero, which is not desirable. So we make a fixation point little before the highest point of strength. Then if it is not responding, then you can go for line flyage, soil stabilization, where flyage is easily available. Uh, soil having medium PI to 5 to 20. When soil does not respond to lime alone, then you can go for lime plus flyage. So lime is 2 to 3 percent, flyage 6 to 12 percent, and soil is 92 to 80 percent is mixed in this case. Then we come to the cement stabilization. When higher and faster development of strength is needed for waterlogged areas in, in, in the low or high rainfall areas, then you can go for this type of soil type. Three types of soils are there. Cement content may be 3 to 5, 4 to 8, 8 to 15. And this stabilization is due to the development of bond between the hydrated cement and compacted soil particles and the point of contact. So there are two methods for this. One is the British design method and another we will see later. In this, what we do is we make the samples of this way and uh, 5 centimeter dia and 10 centimeter height right and in this different uh, uh, the samples are having different cement content and then we uh, put them for seven days and after seven days we find out the strength you can see here these are the strength, the cement content is changing and compressive strength we are finding it out here. This curve is drawn and corresponding to 0.175 kg per millimeter square or 17.5 kg per centimeter square. According, uh, corresponding to, to that, whatever is the cement content, that is our optimum moisture content. Another method is the PCA method in which ability to soil to withstand wet, dry or freeze those cycles are made. The same type of samples are made here, 10 centimeter, 5 centimeter. And in this, we they go for wet, dry or freeze those cycle. Wet, dry means for 24 hours, it is put in water. Then for 24 hours, it is put in the oven. Then again for 10, 24 hours, it is put in the water. Again, then in 24 hours in the oven. So that way, after 12 cycles of wet, dry, or freeze thaw, freeze thaw means it is put in freezer, and then it is put out. It is put in put in freezer, and then it is put in out. After that, a brush is put there, uh, and we with the brush some material will come out. Iron brush, iron uh, brushes are used for this purpose, and we find out what is the loss in weight. You can see here that uh, uh, this is for a1 a3 a2 4 type soil as per hrb classification the maximum loss allowed is 14 percent for this it is allowed is 10 percent for them this is allowed 7 percent so minimum cement content which is allowing this much maximum brushing loss is the optimum cement content then you can use the soil vitamin uh, stabilization also this is mainly used in desert area. You are in, in Rajasthan. So in Rajasthan, we go for this type of soil vitamin stabilization. Waterproofing and binding is done by vitamin uh, stabilization. In this, you do the cutback and emulsions are used. Factors influencing properties of soil vitamin are soil type, type of vitamin material, amount of vitamin, mixing, curing, compaction, and additive. 
there is no standard method first you have to find out the omc and mdd then with the varying vitamin content you have to do the cbr and modified upper test and based on that you can decide uh, what is the uh, vitamin content you can see here that stability martial stability is coming like this so the maximum value is this one you can go for this value of vitamin content right and in that you can see as you are increasing the vitamin content initially the water absorption is increasing but it goes on coming down maximum dry density comes down with the addition of vitamin content why because the uh, density of uh, the the vitamin is one while the density of soil may be 1.6 or 1.5 or 1.7 like that so when you are adding any material of lesser density then overall density will come down so that is why maximum dry density is coming down but it is not harmful these are some special treatments uh, which are put in waterlogged areas uh, like you can put three to five percent line you can make a strand blanket for cutter cut if this is a road the water is coming like this from the, the, the water table so what we do we provide a strand blanket in between so it acts as a cutoff layer and for that this formula is given you can use for this purpose and uh, uh, in this, the D1 is the aperture size of C through which fraction passes, and D2 D is the aperture size of C on which fraction is retained. Right? And uh, th these are the maximum and minimum sizes. Based on that, you can find out the thickness of the sand line. Or a primary coat of comprising of 50% of uh, high speed diesel oil and 50% vitamin can be put on both sides of the trench at 1 kg per square meter. 